Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome to another one of my pipe drive training videos. In this video, I want to give you an introduction to projects and project management in pipe drive. If you have any questions at the end of this video, feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you would like one-on-one -on -one help with setting up or optimizing your pipe drive account, automating your sales process, and just getting more out of this CRM, then click the link in the description below to learn more about our pipe drive consulting options. Now, let me start by briefly talking about why you would use projects in pipe drive compared to another project management tool. Or if you've already decided that you're going to use Pipedrive projects, then feel free to use the chapter markers below to skip ahead. So why would you use Pipedrive projects instead of something else like Asana, which is what we actually provide consulting support on as well, or something like Trello or another project management tool? Well, the benefit of using the project management features in Pipedrive mainly is that it keeps you inside one system. If you're already using Pipedrive as your sales CRM and then you win a deal, now you need to manage the fulfillment or delivery of your product or service. If we can just stay inside the same tool where we've already got all the information about the customer anyway, there's an advantage to doing that. It also means that you don't have to integrate another third-party tool. And what I would say is Pipedrive Projects, I think, is a great fit if you don't have a project management tool right now and if you're happy with something fairly simple and straightforward that allows you to track the status of your projects and what you need to do. The reason you might want to consider a third-party project management tool, something like Asana or Trello or Basecamp, is if you need more powerful project management features. With Asana, for example, it has advanced features like project timelines, dependencies, you can also track your team's workload. It's very useful for internal communication. And so it's a very robust and powerful project management tool. If you need more of those advanced project management features, then you might want to consider something like Asana. If you also plan on using it not just for the delivery or fulfillment of your service or product, but you're also using it from a project management standpoint across other areas of your business, like admin, accounting, other areas like that, then again, you may want to consider a third-party project management tool. So with that out of the way, if you are interested in exploring Pipedrive projects, keep watching and let's take a look. Now, just briefly, from a pricing perspective, the projects add-on is an additional monthly fee for each user that requires this uh, feature. So you can see down here, if you pay annually for the year, it's gonna be $6.70 per month per user at the annual rate, or it's $8 per user per month if you prefer to bill monthly. You don't have to upgrade everyone in your account. If you just need one or two people to have access to projects, you only need to buy that number of seats or licenses. If you then navigate to your company settings and then manage users, you can then look at the users in your account and if you edit the access rights for a user, you can enable or disable the project's subscription for that user. Again, this would require a paid seat for projects, but this is where you can control who has access to those features. Once we have the user set up, we can then navigate to the projects tab in our navigation over here. And projects are actually organized in a very similar way to our normal deal pipeline. If I go to my pipeline, this is the view that you're already accustomed to. Each of these is a deal and we move the deal through various pipeline stages. And so projects operate in a very similar way. Each of these cards is a project and we move the project through various stages on a project board. Now I have this Asana onboarding uh, project board. So this is where I'm managing the rollout and adoption of Asana within different organizations. This is just a demo, of course. Um, but I can have multiple boards. So if I want a new board, let's say for uh, website design, website design projects, I can give this uh, board a name. I can then customize the stages. So kickoff, website planning, maybe let's add another phase here. Let's put that here and say design approved implementation, review, and closing. Yeah, we can we can leave that. So there we go. I've now got different boards for different types of projects that I'm working on. And these boards can have different phases or stages that the project will go through. Now, before you create your first live or actual project, I would suggest starting with a template. So if you open the uh, menu drawer here, you can go to the templates menu. 
And this is where you can pre-build different project templates. So I've already got this Asana Consulting one. Let me start a new template. And this template is gonna go onto the website design projects board. I'm gonna give it a name up here. So let's call this website design project. I can put in a description here if I want. And you will see here in the middle that all the phases from that board, so the website design projects board that this template is linked to, I can see those phases in here. And so now I can create either tasks or activities and add those to my template. So let's uh, say for kickoff, we need to start with a task, which is, uh, let's say, schedule kickoff call with client. And I could either leave this unassigned, or if I want, I could say this is going to be assigned to Lindsay on my team. I can then put in a date. So this is the number of days from the project start date. So I'm actually going to say on day zero, which would be on the start date. And so once I'm happy with my task, I'm going to go ahead and click save. And so I can keep going like this. Uh, let's, let's do one more. So I'm going to do another task. Let's call this design meeting. This will be assigned to me. And ideally we want this to happen within, let's say seven days from the project start date. And on the right hand side here, I can also add subtasks. So let's say um, brand assets received, uh, client brief discussed, and let's do, um, you know, uh, deadline confirmed. I'm just coming up with some random subtasks here. And so now I can I can expand this task and I can see the various subtasks within this design meeting task. So I can keep going through my template, I can add tasks, which are basically the, the steps that we need to complete. Now you can also create an activity. And this is where you can create an activity which utilizes the activities that you've already created and set up in your deal pipeline. So if I go to my company settings, and then go to the activities tab. These are the activity types that you are already using in your deal flow. So when you create a deal, these are the activities that you can use. And, uh, and we, we, can, we can borrow those and use them within our projects as well. So if I go back to my website project, I might use an activity here to, um, let's say I want to send an email, send invite, for kickoff, whoops, kickoff call. That happens a day later. And then I can again, I can assign this to um, a specific person or I can choose whoever the project owner is. Whoever's gonna be the owner of the, the, the project, they will be the assignee. So the difference between a task and an activity, tasks are basically reminders or just to do items, whereas activities go onto your activities list that you use when following up uh, on your deals already. So activities I find quite useful for those time sensitive actions that need to be taken, like sending emails, having calls, meetings, those types of actions lend themselves really well to activities. If I go to one of my other templates that I set up earlier, this is my Asana consulting project. You can see I've built this out with various tasks and activities. These have been assigned to the project owner and different individuals on the team and I've got dates set up for when these tasks need to be completed as well. So I'm using the template to build a rough timeline of when different tasks need to happen. Of course, when I set up the actual project, some of these dates may change, but at least when I set it up, I've got that approximate timeline ready to go and that's gonna save me a lot of time not having to go through everything one by one. When I'm ready to create a new project, I can do that by clicking the uh, plus project button up here I can choose my template. So let's do an Asana consulting project. I can give this a name. So let's say Apple Asana rollout. And I'm gonna choose the start date for my project. So let's just say this is starting next month. Let's just say March 1st. Now that start date is gonna be used to set all of the actual due dates for my tasks and my activities that I've set up in my template. So it's important that I set my start date uh, at the correct time because every other task is gonna flow down from that start date. I can then put in a due date or end date for the project. So if we're starting in March, let's say we wanna be done by end of April. So I've got my project uh, timeline here. I can put this into a, I can fast track the phase, but I'm just gonna put this into my new project phase. 
I can choose the owner of the project. And again, this owner will be used when assigning tasks. If I have any tasks that are assigned to the project owner, that person will then get assigned those tasks. Now down here, I can link this project with relevant deals, contact a contact person and an organization. So this project is linked to all the relevant objects in Pipedrive. So if I search for a deal, I'm, I'm gonna search for Apple Asana rollout. This is a deal that I've already closed. I can then link this deal. I can link multiple, maybe I've got multiple deals that are somehow related to this project, but for now, I'm just gonna link that one. And because I have Tim Cook and Apple as the linked contact and organization with this deal, Pipedrive is suggesting that I link Tim Cook and Apple as the person and organization for this project as well. If I'm not uh, dealing with Tim, maybe I'm gonna deal with Johnny, I think it's Johnny with an N, isn't it? Oh no, there's Johnny Ive, there we, uh, Johnny Ive. Maybe I'm dealing with Johnny Ive for this uh, particular project. I can change that contact person if I want. Um, if I want to set the label, I can. I mean, this project hasn't started yet, so I'll probably leave that blank. And I can fill in the description. So, um, web, uh, Asana rollout for 10,000 Apple employees. There we go. So I'm gonna save that, and I'm gonna create my new project using the template. So let's take a look at what's happened. Inside my project, all of my tasks and activities have been assigned to me as the project owner, and they've got the correct dates, the 1st of March, as per the start date of the project. You can see my other dates have filled in here according to my template. I can close these sections if I don't want to see all of the detail at once. Maybe I just want to focus on one section or phase at a time. On the left here in this details panel, uh, we can see a few things. I can change the status of this project. So when I'm ready, I can progress the project to client onboarding or maybe design and implementation. My labels, I can change the, the label on this project. And by default, Pipedrive is suggesting that I use labels for the status of the project. So I can say if the project is on track or behind, but you can edit these labels if you need to. I can also change the start and end date for the project by clicking either of these fields. And we can see that the um, project is linked with uh, this Pipedrive contact. So I can, I can click that link. I can take a look at that contact and my history with this person. And actually you can see here the uh, project uh, is linked on the contact there as well. In my details panel here, I can see the description of the project which I input when I created it. And I can customize these. I can click at the three dots here and I can customize these fields. And similar to how you can create custom fields on a deal or a person, we can create our own project fields as well. So I've created this field here called go live date. This is used for tracking. When are we going live with Asana? So during my project, I could click this and say, right, we're gonna go live maybe sort of the 15th of March. That's our go live date and I can, I can fill that in and I can add other fields if I want to customize the details of this project. Down here, I can see the deal that this project is linked to. So I can see the Apple Asana rollout deal. I can click that and I can actually bring up the deal. I can go back and look at any emails or notes related to that deal. And I can also see important fields on that deal. Now you can actually customize these. So if I go to my custom fields, if I go to my lead and deal fields here, you'll see there is the option to display a deal field in the project view. You can see this column here. So let's just say, um, let's say we've got summary. Let's just use this service one as an example. If I edit this field, I can choose to make this appear in the project view. So now when I go back to my project, there we go, I can see that service field there. I actually haven't filled this in, but if I just fill that in very quickly, uh, you can see I can actually edit the deal field from, from here in the project. And so this is a really handy way of getting access to information that you've already collected during the sales process. Things like the client's budget, you know, ideally I would have that filled in, but I can easily reference that important information that my sales team has already gathered and I can use that as part of my, my project. Other things that I can do in here, so obviously as I go, I can mark these tasks off as complete. And you'll actually see the progress up here is uh, updating. So I've now completed three of 19 tasks in this project. 
You will also notice that if tasks are overdue, like these two here, this will also update the progress of the project. So with a quick glance, I can see how many tasks have been done. So this green section here, how many tasks are overdue, and then how many tasks are remaining, the rest of this line here. So I get a very clear idea of the project progress. Once I get to the end of my project, you see I've completed all of my tasks here. Every phase is now complete. I can then mark the overall project as complete as well. And so that's a way of sort of saying the project is done, we're closing it down, we're archiving this project now. Or for any reason along the way, if the project is uh, not going to proceed or not going to be finished for some reason, I can cancel the project. Uh, I'm going to leave it open for now. If you take a look at the tabs along the top, so we're on the plan tab right now, but we also have a section where we can upload files and attachments, important documents that are related to this project. I've got an area where I can take notes. If I just want somewhere to store notes, maybe I'm having a meeting about this project, I can put those meeting notes in here. I can send emails. So I can click here and I can compose and send an email using a template. And we can also take advantage of the Pipedrive Smart Docs feature. So once you connect your Google or your Microsoft account, you can use this to easily send documentation about the project. Uh, it might be like a scoping document or uh, maybe a brief questionnaire, something like that. Any documentation that you need maybe the client to fill in to help you with the project, we can fill that document in and have that sent out via this system as well. Now, Pipedrive has also included support for projects in the workflow automation features within Pipedrive. Now, this does require the advanced subscription or higher to use workflow automation. But you can see I've got an example here of an automation where when I uh, update a deal and the status of the deal has changed to one, and only if it's a certain type of deal, maybe if it's a consulting deal, I can then tell Pipedrive to create a new project automatically. So I've said here, use the organization name uh, in the project title. So it's gonna be like Apple Asana Rollout. I can set the owner of the project. I can link the project to the correct deal, organization and person. I can choose my start dates, maybe happening in a day. And so I can automatically create this new project using a workflow. So to give you a, a quick example of that, let's head on over to my deal page. So let's imagine I have this deal, Jane Smith, Asana Rollout. You can see it's a consulting deal. That was one of the conditions of my workflow. And if I mark this as one, I've now closed the deal. I've, I've said, we've, we've won this deal. It's under contract. We've been paid, whatever your win condition is. And now if I go to the Jane Smith contact, we should see already, here we go, the Jane's Co Asana Rollout project. If I go to my project board, I'll see it on my project board as well. There we go, Jane's Co Asana Rollout and all my tasks and everything are ready to go. I've got my deal details down here, the service, the summary, budget, all of that information has automatically come across. So this is using workflow automation gives you a really seamless way of easily kicking off a new project as you win your deals. So that is a little look at projects in Pipedrive. I'm really excited by this feature because it gives users a really simple way of managing their projects after a sale has been completed without having to leave the Pipedrive interface. If you have any questions about projects in Pipedrive, feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you want help with Pipedrive, setting up your account or optimizing your use of this tool, click that link in the description below and I would love to chat. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.